Some people don't like the flavors associated with Thanksgiving, the sage, the rosemary, the thyme, but you can still make a turkey that is gonna please almost anyone. And I'm gonna show you today how I make my rotisserie Chinese turkey. Before we even get the turkey out here, we have to get our marinade prepared. Now this is not a marinade that the turkey's gonna sit in for hours. You definitely could do that. This is more of a glaze rub that's gonna go on the outside to help build some flavor. So first we have two tablespoons of hoisin sauce, two teaspoons of soy sauce, a tablespoon of minced or crushed garlic, a tablespoon of minced or crushed ginger, and a teaspoon of ground black pepper. Just gonna mix this all up. It's a very thick and pasty mix we're gonna be putting on the outside of this turkey. Let's give this a little taste. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. I love that sweetness of that hoisin mixed with everything else here. All right, let's bring on the bird. So here is our turkey. This is about a 12 and a half pound turkey. Nothing special about it. For me, it's about the perfect size for the rotisserie. I don't like to go above 16, but this is a good size. All we're gonna do is get our rub on here and rub it all over this bird. You can do this without gloves, but to me, gloves make this so much easier. Get it everywhere, even rub a little inside. Roll the bird over. This is not the only seasoning we're gonna be adding to this, but it is the first layer. We're also gonna be stuffing this turkey with an orange, an apple, and a pear. And then later on, when it gets close to being done, we're gonna put a chili sauce glaze on it. All right, there's our turkey. It's ready to get on the spit. Before we actually push the spit rod through this, I wanna get those fruits inside the body cavity here. I'm gonna turn this a little bit so we can see a little better. Got my apple. It's gonna push that all the way in there. Our apple in there, and then we're gonna break our orange into a couple pieces. Shove those in next to the apple. And we're gonna put our pear right here at the end. Now we're gonna get this on the spit. Just gonna take our spit and we're gonna feed it through <laughs> the fruit first here as we come out the other side. I'm gonna bring our legs up on top. They're gonna to be tied. I wanna get them in here while I feed this through. And now let's get the other fork on here. All right, turkey's on the spit. Before I tie it up, I wanna give an initial test to see how balanced it is before we truss it up. So all I'm gonna do is lift it up a little bit, kind of rotate it in my hands. And it actually feels pretty good there. It's not too out of balance. So now it's trussing up time. So I'm gonna take one of the legs, tie a string around it. This is kitchen string. I'm gonna bring it over the top and wrap it around the other leg several times. I'm just gonna bring this tight. I'm gonna tie it off tight. Clip off that excess. Now we're gonna to move to the wings. Let me turn this around. If you have a marinade or a rub on your turkey, this can be a messy part, so just accept that you're gonna get stuff on you, even if you got gloves on. It's part of the fun of all this. So I'm gonna tie off my string just above the elbow of the wing, and I'm gonna bring it up here, come across the other one, go around, same place, just above the elbow, tie that off, just like that, trim that, I'm going to tie off to that same spot, and go under the bird, because we want to secure the wings both ways so that it's not flapping, so that there's no escape attempt. I'll just go ahead and tie that off tight. Give this a little check here, see how we're doing. 
nothing's flapping around too much. That looks good to me. Now there's many ways to truss up a turkey when you're putting it on a rotisserie. I've seen many different methods. This is just one that I use. If you have a different method, use that. If there's one you see that's better, by all means, go for it. This is just simple. I do it this way. All right, let's get this out on the rotisserie. It's pretty bright out here, but I hope you can see that on the Thermapro reading 326 degrees in the kettle. I wanna keep it between 300 and 350. If it spikes up to 375 during a portion of it, I'm not worried about that, but my range that I'm shooting for is 300 to 350. So let's take a look at the setup. I'm getting my temperature reading from the Thermapro Ambient Probe, which is fed through a silicone grommet that I installed in the Weber rotisserie ring. I have the two Weber briquette baskets set up, one on each side of where the spit will be running down the center of the rotisserie ring. I also have a drip pan in there with about a half an inch of water in there just for a little bit of moisture. I'm gonna be adding some cherry wood today to smoke this Chinese turkey. But let's get this turkey on. Let's get our rotisserie turned on. Now this Weber rotisserie accessory does not require a counterweight. That's what it said. And so far over a dozen turkeys, they've all worked fine. I've done everything up to an 18 pound on here. I think it was an 18 pound. Might have been a little bigger actually. And no problem with it. As long as the turkey's you know, generally balanced, it should be good. And let's get some cherry wood on here. I'm just gonna put one piece of cherry wood on for now. We'll add some more a little bit later. Now, it's time to get the lid on. Let this Chinese turkey bathe in that cherry smoke and get cooking. So we're gonna be going by temperature on this turkey. We're shooting for 165 degrees internal temperature. Now, obviously you're not gonna have a probe that stays in it the whole time as it's spinning around. I know they make certain things like that, but I haven't found one that I've been 100% impressed with yet. So what I'm gonna be doing is at the hour mark, I'll be checking for temperature and then gauging then. I've done these turkeys where they've taken anywhere from an hour and a half up to two and a half hours. This is not a huge turkey, so it should cook fairly quickly. Now the bottom vent and the top vent on this are fully open and I'm gonna leave them that way unless I need to adjust for temperature. At the hour mark, we're also gonna decide if that's the time to add the glaze to see about how much time is left. I wanna put it on when there's about 30 minutes or so left in my estimation. So let's go inside and make that glaze. So this glaze is very simple, just a few ingredients and you can play around with if you like. I'm gonna start with a couple tablespoons of honey. To that, I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of a barbecue sauce I like. You can add any kind you like. To this, I'm gonna add a heaping tablespoon of chili garlic sauce. You'll find this in Chinese restaurants, Vietnamese restaurants. And we're just gonna mix this up. It's gonna be very thick. Of course, we gotta have a taste. Oh, that is nice, wow. <laughs> that has sweet heat in it. All right, I'm gonna get this in the refrigerator. And about 15 minutes before I check the temperature, I'm gonna take it out of the refrigerator so it's not so thick, just in case that's gonna be the time we're gonna put this on that turkey. So I'll see you in a little bit. All right, we are an hour in to our rotisserie cook of this Chinese turkey. Time to have a look at it and check some temperatures. I added another piece of cherry wood about oh, 20 minutes ago. So let me turn this rotisserie off so we can check these temperatures. Stop it here first so I can check the thigh temperature. The thigh is looking like it's in the low 130s right now. That's to be expected. Let's bring it around and see what the breasts are like. We're looking at about 120. So we're about 10 degrees difference between breast and thigh. That's not unusual. So we still got a ways to go. I don't want to glaze it quite yet. I'm going to wait about another 30 minutes before I glaze this. So let's get this spinning again. I'm going to add one more piece of cherry down in here and get my lid back on. I'll bring you back in about 30 minutes. All right, it's been a half hour. So we've been at total cook time about an hour and a half. I want to check the temperature one more time, but I'm pretty sure we're going to glaze at this time. Nice color on there. So this comes around here and we're going to stop it so we can check the breasts again. All right, that's looking in the upper 130s, which is good. All right, we are going to go ahead and glaze this Chinese turkey. 
Get the breast side first, then we'll rotate it and get the back side. You can see some of the skin is split here on the legs and the wings, and that sometimes happens. Let's rotate this around. Get the back here. We're not gonna waste a whole lot on the back, but there is good skin here. Let's take it around again and put some more on the breast. All right, let's get this turning again. We're gonna get our lid on, keep cooking. We'll check it again in about half an hour. All right, it's been about two hours and 15 minutes, actually. I added a little extra time there, just to be sure. Our kettle temp's been holding steady between 330 and 360 the whole time. We're at 355 now. It's time to check this turkey, but I'm almost positive we're gonna be done. Nice color. 164.8, <laughs> I'm gonna call that done. All right, I'm going to get this off here and get it inside. We'll have a look at it and cut some slices. So here is our rotisserie Chinese turkey. It really, really smells good right now. It has such a great color on it. And I'm going to cut a slice right now, right out of the breast. Let's get right in here. Still very hot. Ooh, very hot. Oh, oh, that looks good. Let me cut another piece here too. Oh, the skin is gonna be wonderful. Oh, that is nice and juicy. Oh, look at that. It is 100% absolutely time to taste. So here we go with our rotisserie Chinese turkey. I hope you can just see the color on that. That glaze at the end really helps to build that color of this bird. But now, let's see how it tastes. Oh wow, that is really nice. The key with something like this is really to try and have skin with the meat because we didn't do a marinade or a rub for hours and hours. And you can definitely do that. But the way that you do this on the rotisserie and the way that skin cooks, with that marinade rub on it, it stays attached to the skin. It doesn't fall off, it's, it's right there. And as you bite into the pieces of meat, you're getting that flavor from the skin. Oh man. All those juices from the fruit inside continually basted the bird as it was turning there for two hours and 15 minutes. Orange juice, apple juice, pear juice, just going through the inside of that cavity and making its way out. It is just so tender, so juicy. Oh, but I gotta tell you, that skin is the star. And that's one of the things I love about doing turkeys on the rotisserie. It's such a big bird and you don't want that skin to dry out, but you want it to crisp up at the same time. It's competing factors, but as it turns and you have all those juices continually basting it, as the skin dries out a little bit and crisps up, it never dries out. And the meat underneath, especially if you have something inside like that fruit, just is continually basted both from inside and outside and it just turns out terrific. Mm. When I cook a turkey or chicken like this, I like to have some of that chili sauce on the side because you can get some right on the meat. Oh, have that little extra kick right when you bite in. So if you wanna try something different for Thanksgiving or whenever you're doing a turkey, and if you have a rotisserie, Chinese turkey on the rotisserie is one of my favorites and I hope it's one of yours too. 